often think back to my childhood in rural North Carolina. It's so true how the early experiences of our lives shape who we become as we grow older. My father died in a work-related accident when I was very young. For many years, our family was just my mother, my older sister, and me. I remember going shopping with my mother and sister. Oh, we enjoyed those days together, but there weren't many like that. My childhood was not an unhappy one, but at times it seemed as if something were missing. In that time after my father's death, our house always seemed empty, and it was during that time that I first learned about her. I was too little to reach the phone, but I used to listen with fascination as my mother would talk into the strange little device. I watched her once, and that's how I figured it out. She would turn the crank. Then she would talk to the tiny person that lived in the box. That person's name was Information, please. I knew that because that's what my mother always called her as soon as she answered. Information, please, may have been small, but <laughs> she was one of the smartest people in the world. She could supply the correct time immediately. There was nothing she did not know. I was never allowed to talk on the telephone when I was young, but one day destiny lent a hand. My mother was next door visiting the neighbors, and I decided this was the perfect opportunity to explore the garage. Uh, this was something else I was not allowed to do. While I was playing with a hammer, I accidentally whacked my thumb. Mother was next door, and my sister was at a friend's house. I had to tell someone about my hurt thumb. Information, please. I asked as if I had just rubbed Aladdin's lamp. There was a click or two, and then she came on. Information was all she said. I hurt my finger. I told her in my best pouty voice. She asked if my mother was home, and I told her I was alone. After she found out I wasn't bleeding, she told me to go to the ice box and chip off a little piece of ice. She reassured me that everything would be all right. Well, from that day forward, I called information please for everything. Information please. Do you know what a fraction is? Information please. I saw some chipmunks in the park. If I want to feed them, what do they eat? One day, I went into our sitting room, and I didn't hear Petey singing. When I climbed up to get a better look, I saw my bird on the bottom of the cage. I called information, please, to help me make sense of the latest death in my family. She must have sensed that it truly upset me. She told me, "Paul, always remember that there are other worlds to sing in." Information, please. How do you spell trouble? What happened? My friend was gone. I couldn't talk to her anymore. Did I hurt her? I can't remember being more afraid than when I ran up to my room to hide. Information, please, must have realized what happened, because in less than an hour, there was a telephone repairman at our door. I watched nervously while I waited to see if this telephone doctor could fix my friend. You can't imagine how relieved I was when he started speaking to information, please. When I was nine years old, my mother remarried and we moved across the country, and I missed my mentor acutely. As I grew into my teens, the Memories of those childhood conversations never really left me. Years later, on my way to college, I stopped off at the same small town I grew up in. My sister still lived there and had been happily mellowed by marriage and motherhood. 